I need to shorten a large number of different size bolts and screws to custom lengths for some upcoming projects. I decided that what I really needed was a lantern chuck with a nicely knurled nut. Probably doesn't need knurling, but I'm doing it anyway, if only to enhance important properties like grip and bling. I was inspired by a video, probably on YouTube, but I'm sad to say I can't find it now, so I can't acknowledge the source. The clever innovation that I picked up was to use a set of quarter inch hex screwdriver bits to fit into the head of the screws I was modifying, so they're firmly held against rotation. This lantern chuck I'm making will work on bolts and screws up to 8mm or 5 sixteenths of an inch, but it's really intended for threads in the 3 to 6mm range. Look, I know it's complete overkill, but grinding bolts to length means burnt fingers, making gauge plates and bandsawings fine if you need a hundred of the same size. Anyway, if a thing's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. I found a bit of one inch stainless bar and got to work. The stainless was the nearest bit of silvery metal that I could lay my hands on. This is a remix video because the original had such terrible sound balance. It's also got added rant. I'm sure I could have found much better material in my metal store, but it's cold and dark in there and there are things that scuttle. Size looks good. Time to chamfer those edges before I cut myself. Again. One day, I'm going to remember to set up a chamfering tool that I can use the other way round. Right, those edges are less razor-like now. The shank diameter is 20mm, so I can use it in an ER40 or R8 collet, but more importantly, so I can't use it in a drill chuck and gall it up horribly. Self-knowledge is a marvellous thing. The overall length of the body is 96mm. I'm just going to part it off rather than using the bandsaw. These parting inserts from Cutwell are excellent on stainless. Anyway, I've got my fingers crossed very firmly. Wish me luck. Quick change of ends and it's time to turn the OD for the thread to 22mm. Sharp-eyed listeners may notice that I'm using a high rake polished carbide insert intended for aluminium on this 304 stainless. For the avoidance of doubt, this is not because I'm too lazy to change to a more traditional insert. No, no and thrice no. These inserts work brilliantly on 304 for a while. Look, they're cheap, okay? Don't at me, bro. I do love this Mitotoyo. It was a birthday present. From me to me, obviously. I mean, I do need socks, I'm not ungrateful or anything. 
Anyway, I hit the mark and it just needs another 0.2mm to get to the finished dimension. I don't have a narrow rounded grooving tool, so the parting insert is going to have to do double duty as a groover, making a terminal gutter for the threading insert to start in. Yes, start. I'm of the Joe Pizinski persuasion when it comes to single point threading. I've never really understood why everyone slathers die chem on, then does a test to see if the gears on their lathes have magically grown extra teeth. However, tradition is tradition. <laughs> Using the big threading insert the right way up as a chamfering tool is a bit of an underhand trick. Time to fit the skinny internal threading tool with its fancy Vargas metric insert to do the actual threading operation. One millimetre pitch, so root three millimetres diameter thread depth if my trigonometry works. Call it nearly 1.8. I even remembered to touch off with the lathe in reverse for a change. OK, pointless scratch pass time. Right, quick clean up with a smooth file and the lathe running forwards, then flip into reverse and give the threads a good polish with Gariflex. Because can I hecker's like find any bright boy compound, damn it?
At this point, a mysterious time traveller brought me a half-finished blank nut that doesn't actually exist yet in the timeline of this video. Spooky action at a distance, or what? Assuming that causality violation doesn't cause a singularity that ends the universe, I'll proceed as though nothing happened. Looks like the thread's very close to dimension now, so I'll take a spring pass and do a bit more polishing. And as my old mate Nick used to say, job will be a good un. The screwdriver bit sockets 11mm diameter and the hex shaft 6.35AF so I'll drill a 7.2mm hole to accommodate that and drill and ream the hole 11mm for the first 40mm or so. Look the exact number was on the print and I use it to write a shopping list ok. I'm sure these things happen even in proper shops. Time for another snowflake trigger alert. Look folks, I know there are obsessive tidiness fetishists, acolytes of Marie Kondo and people who are just plain weird about machine shop cleanliness. I also understand completely that some people find my untidiness and the layer of chips on the walls, floors and non-functional areas of my machines physically painful. To those with real OCD I can only apologise unreservedly for any distress. For the others. The moaners, the whingers, the nitpickers, bullies, fanatics, those who had tidiness beaten into them, and especially those dreadfully boring keyboard warriors who get their jollies from criticising the behaviour and habits of those of us not blessed with the tidiness gene, I say, butt out. Your opinions are of no interest. You're a bit sad. And you need to take a long, hard look at yourselves and consider re-evaluating your entrenched opinions and embrace a bit of diversity. Some of us are pathologically untidy. Get used to it, or at least close your eyes. But don't waste your breath moaning. It's unattractive and you could be doing something useful and nice and uplifting. Go yell at politicians and corporations instead if moaning's your hobby. What on earth makes you think you've got the right to tell me how to run my shambles? So, sorry, uh, shop. You're not my mum. H hi mum. Yes, it, it is a bit untidy. Moment of truth. Does that janky Chinese reamer make a hole the right size? Miracles will never cease. Oops, you pushed it in too far, Neil.
With the part reversed in the ER40 collet, the next job is to drill a through hole and tap it M6. I'll relieve the first section so my fat stemmed spiral point taps will reach in far enough. I'm using a dog point grub screw to prevent the bit hold from rotating. It'll run in a slot that I must remember to mill. The hole for the grub screw is in the 25mm diameter raised collar, so I need to drill and tap a hole there. Yes, I know I've got a nice shiny hymer, but this simple edge finder is actually good enough.
This is the magnetic bit holder that I'm using, and I remembered that it needs a slot milling. Yay for me! The end mill is a 4 flute 4mm carbide job made by YG1. I haven't broken many of these yet. Look, I'll be gentle, okay? It, it's made of tungsten flipping carbide, and the steel doesn't stand a chance, honest. Time for a trial fit. I need to check that the slot and grub screw prevent rotation and that I can use the rear M6 grub screw to adjust the position of the bit holder and therefore the bit. In related news, I have a cunning plan for a lock screw behind the main M6 grub. Here's the simple trick to stop it from spinning the main grub screw. Pop it in a 6mm collet and turn a pointed spigot. Would have been useful to film that. Beastly camera battery died again. I'm beginning to hate this camera. It's time to make that big brass knurled nut.
sometimes I'm really pleased that I made that tailstock DRO. It comes in very handy for the next few operations. Nice blob of oil on the lens again, I see. The 10mm boring bar sings horribly if it has too much stick out, which in its mind is anything more than 11mm. It was very cheap. If there are any of the anti-glove league still watching, I've had three injuries while working around my lathe. First one, I cut my arm on a sharp edge of the cross slide while cleaning the machine because I was wearing short sleeves. Second was a needle stick injury from some hideously pointy brass turnings in the chip tray which punctured my nitrile glove. Third was when I was lifting out some stringy chips from the chip tray and cut my finger through my glove on a sharp bit of the shovel I was using. Three injuries, all when wearing gloves, and with the machine powered off. So you could say wearing gloves is hugely dangerous. However, I would argue that in each case, either the glove was peripheral to the incident, or that the injury was made worse by not wearing enough gloves. Any competent epidemiological study would doubtless prove that it's cleaning up that's the common element here. Dangerous thing, cleaning. I do love my three-point bore mics. This rather splendid tap was a gift from a friend who's a radio ham, but has a serious second-hand tool shop browsing affliction, for which I'm deeply grateful. Long may it continue untreated. Counter boring time. I'm using a 16mm long series high speed steel slot drill. That's a cheap 3mm gauge block that I use as a precision spacer. Knock 3mm off the tailstock DRO reading and you get a very accurate measure of the depth of the counter bore. 
although the face isn't flat so the counterbore bottom is very very slightly conical. Not like I'm paranoid or anything, but a double check with a depth mic is reassuring. Part it off half a millimetre oversize, then I'll mount it on the core as a mandrel to turn it concentric and cut the knurl. A quick check of the length tells me how much to trim off the face.
back to the bridge port to mill the scallops out of the sides of the nut for access. I'll clean up the nut with needle files. Now I need a set of collets to fit the nut. They all need to be drilled or reamed to the right diameter, then turned to the right length for each custom screw size. The focusing went a bit squiffy and then the battery warning light started moaning again. So this was a bit seat of the pants, but the video's already very late, so janky rubbish cinematography will have to do, cause it's all I have.
Huge thanks to whoever it was that came up with the idea of using the hex bit holder and to every machinist in history who's ever made one of these. I'm going to make some little ones now as I have a pile of custom M2 and M1.6 screws to make. Finally, enormous thanks to Emma from Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop for being the inspiration to get this project to the finish line. Since Caroline died in June, it's been hard to find purpose and motivation to get me through this stage of grieving. Sorry it's late, but the chihuahuas ate my homework. <laughs>